Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. In the previous video, we have talked about the bubble sort. And in this video, we are going to talk about the insertion sorting algorithm. It's one of the simplest algorithms among all the sorting algorithms. And we are going to take some examples with these Uno cards. And then the way you uh, sort your cards or playing cards and exactly same way we can implement for the insertion sorting algorithm as well. So let's see how to do that. And then we will do the exactly same thing in terms of uh, with the help of Java coding, we will write some test cases and then let's see how exactly it works. But before that, we have to understand the proper algorithm, how exactly it works and what exactly the condition and uh, what is the mechanism and what is the process to implement the insertion logic or insertion sorting logic. Let's see how to do this. So let me share my screen now. So let's see, I'm going to maintain one array here. Let's see, A, R, R, array having some integer values, which is totally unsorted. So I'm going to write, let's see, this is eight, then this is two, this is four, this is one, and then this is three, right? And then I'm going to, let's see, put in, in this particular array and uh, we have to sort it. And here you can see it's completely unsorted here, right? So what we have to do in the insertion logic or insertion sorting logic, the first element, let's see, this is what zeroth element. This is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. The first means the zeroth element. We will assume that, okay, yeah, this element is already sorted. Only the first element, whatever the element is available, it is eight or some larger number or small number, whatever the first element is there. We will say, okay, fine. Let's see, this is already sorted. It means from here to here, this array is already sorted. It means we just need to worry about the last four numbers. And then we have to keep shifting towards what towards the left hand side. So let's see how to do that. So I'll do one thing. Let's see, this is my sorted array and this is my unsorted array. UN means let's see unsorted array over here, right? And then what we have to do in the unsorted array, we just need to touch the unsorted array. And in the unsorted array, the first element, what the first element is this two. And what we have to do, we have to check all the unsorted array, whatever the first element is there. And we have to keep comparing with all the sorted arrays here. It means you have to compare two with eight over here. And then if eight, or you can say the left hand side element is greater than the right hand side element. It means if the left hand side element is greater than the right hand side element, it means the left hand side element is greater or is a bigger or is a larger number as compared to the right hand side one. Then what we have to do, all the larger elements, we have to keep shifting towards the right hand side. It means all the left hand side elements, we have to keep shifting towards the right hand side. So let's see in this algorithm, we compare two with eight. So I'll check that. Okay, fine. Eight is greater than two or not. Yes. Condition is satisfied. Eight is greater than two. Then in that case, what should I do? I have to move eight towards the first position. See this towards this particular position, but see if I'm moving eight towards this two will be lost, right? So first what I'll do, I'll maintain one a variable. Let's see current variable is equal to two. So I'll immediately store this two here. And then what will happen in that case, then I'll move this eight over here. So in this case, what will happen in this case, let's see, this will be gone. And then this will become eight over here. And then this part will be totally empty here. Then whatever the current element value is there, I'll just move over here. So two will be shifted over here, right? So what exactly we are doing, this is now finally two then eight, then four, then one, and then three here. So this was the outcome after the first condition that we have written two, eight, four, then one, and then three, I write it like this here. Now we can say that, okay, this two and eight. Now these two guys from here to here, these are sorted. Now, whatever the left, whatever the unsorted left, this one, four, one, and three. Then again, what is the condition? The condition is that we have to pick the first element, this guy from the unsorted element. And then we have to keep comparing with all the sorted array elements. It means in this particular section, this is sorted array element section, right? So I have to compare four with eight also, and I have to compare four with two also with the same logic here. So I'll compare that. So I'll check. Okay. Eight is greater than four. Yes. Condition is satisfied. So what should I do? Move eight towards the right hand side towards over here. But again, if I'm moving here, then four will be lost, right? So what should I do again? I update my current variable is equal to four. Now. 
right? So current value is equal to four, and then eight will be moving over here. So here it will be eight. So let's see, I'm writing eight here. Then this particular value will be empty. The value is gone, and then I'll moving my current position over here. Let's see four here like this. Then again, I'll check four is what two is greater than four. No condition is not satisfied. So I will not move two towards four over here. No, I will not move that. Now, what is the outcome? The outcome is two, four, eight, one, three. So I'll write it here. Let's see two, four, eight, one, and then three here. This is the output of the last one, right? I'll write it here like this two, four, eight, one, three. Now, again, I'll check that. Okay. Yeah. These three elements are sorted now. And what is left for unsorted? These two guys are unsorted. And what exactly the logic I told you? The same logic that we have to apply that in the unsorted array, pick the first element, this one. This time it's one. And one we have to compare with all the elements of the sorted array. It means one we have to compare with eight, then four, and then two. So let's compare that. So I'll do one thing. I'll compare eight is greater than one. Yes, condition is satisfied. Then do what? First, I'll move the one in the current variable that is here. Okay. Then I'll move eight over here. So this guy will become what? One will be gone from here and eight will come here. And this eight is what is will be taken by current. And then again, I'll check four is greater than one. Yes. Condition is again satisfied. Then four will be moved over here. So four here and this place is empty now. And then I'll place current over here. Then again, I'll check that two is greater than one. Yes, this is also condition satisfied. Then in that case, I'll move two over here. Two will be coming here. And then this two will be empty. The space will be empty. And then I'll finally, I'll move. I got my place. The permanent place for the current variable will be stored over here like this. So in that case, what is the outcome? One, two, four, eight, three here. So I'll write it here that, okay, finally now one, two, four, eight, and three. After sorting, can I say that, okay, from here to here, these are the sorted and only the left, part, left out part is that is unsorted part is this one. Then we have to keep checking that, okay, first element in the unsorted, unsorted element is three over here because only one element is left in the unsorted array. So we will pick this three and then I'll compare three with eight, four, two, and one. So let's compare that. So how will you compare? Exactly the same thing that I'm going to check eight is greater than three. Yes, condition is satisfied. So what should I do? First, I'll update my current is equal to three. Otherwise, because when I move eight towards this position, then three will be lost, right? So better, I'll just take a backup here, current equal to three, and then this three will be gone. Eight will be stored here, and this eight will be gone, right? After moving it here. So what will happen? Right now, the temporary position for current is equal to three. Let's see, I'm just writing it here for our reference. Then again, I'll check. it will check four and three. So I'll check four is greater than three. Yes, condition is satisfied. It means move four over here. So four will be coming here. And then what? What is the next position for the current? The next position for current is three over here instead of this. Right? And then again, it will check that two is greater than three. No, it is not greater than three. So what is the permanent position for the current variable? The permanent position for the current variable is over here. Let's see, this is three. And that's it. After that, do I need to proceed further? No. So we have to keep proceeding further, keep checking this condition until the left hand side element is greater than the right hand side element. That's what now we check that. Okay. Yeah. Two is greater than three. No, then no need to proceed further. And then finally, what we exactly we have found, then we have found that, okay, one, then two, then three, then four, and then eight here like this. And this is what, this is a complete sorted array. So we started from there. 28413 from here we started. This is unsorted. And then finally, we are getting sorted array here. And if I talk about the time complexity for this, so let's talk about in the worst case, the time complexity will be what? Because see, we are doing what? First of all, that n number of iterations that we are doing from the second element to the last element, and then multiply by how many times that we are changing the position of the current variable, n number of times. So in that case, the time complexity will be O n square here, big O of n square. 
and same thing if you talk about the average case also in the average case also if some elements are not sorted then it will take o n square but in case of the best case where all the elements are already sorted so we just need to iterate it once so it will give you o of n over here but if you are talking about the space complexity so let's see what will be the the space complexity in this case because we just need to maintain this current variable see current is equal to 1 every time the value of current variable is getting changed so we just need to take one extra space to this particular a uh, value for the current variable so that we can take the backup here right so this current variable let's see i'm taking one integer and uh, it will take only one space so i'll say o of 1 the lead. okay the constant time complexity we will be getting for the space complexity point of view so the worst case we will get o n square so when to use this insertion logic insertion sorting logic when you have a small array or number of elements are small in that case or the smaller array then in that case i can go with that but it will be very expensive if you are going with the large amount of data in that particular array or number of elements are uh, you know, let's say 100 200 300 elements are there then you can think about it okay we have to keep checking and when you reach let's see up to 100 elements over here then you have to keep checking with the previous sorted elements so it will be obviously expensive in that case but this is a pretty simple logic we can apply for the smaller elements array right so remember this thing but we have a better sorting algorithm like quick sort or heap sort that we will talk about it uh, later but now let's see i'll give you one very simple example with this thing as well so here you can see that uh, these are my cards so let's see whenever we are playing the cards right so these are the cards that we are getting which is again so let's see i'm writing with this 28413 in the same order so this is 2 i'll write let's see 8 and then uh, 4 then let's see 1 and 3 okay so let's see somebody has given me this card and then i'll take the card and then i'll see that okay yeah this is not uh, sorted right so how exactly you are going to sort this the same way the first element or you can say let's see the first element in our case it was 8 then i'll say let's see this is 4 or anything that you can take it let's see like this so first element 8 i assume that okay this is already sorted here okay so i'll just keep it like this this is already sorted 8 1 this one then i'll check these are the unsorted element in the unsorted element i'll pick the first guy okay let's pick this one the fourth one this one and then i'll just compare if 8 is greater than 4 i'll move towards the larger element towards over here towards the right hand side then in that case i got these two elements are the sorted elements then in the unsorted array again i'll pick the first one this one two and then i'll compare two with eight so first i'll check eight is greater than two yes so i'll shift eight over here like this so now this is the current position then i'll check four with two four is again greater than two then again i'll shift four after this over here so what is the current position two then four <clears throat> then eight over here it means these three elements are the sorted elements then how many elements are left in the unsorted one and three again the same formula in the unsorted elements unsorted array we have to pick the first one so i'm going to pick this guy one i'll check eight eight and one eight is greater than one move the larger element towards the right hand side again check four and one larger element towards right hand side after one once again two and one larger element are shifting over here like this so what is the final outcome one then two then four then eight over here it means these four guys or four cards are sorted elements right here now what is the unsorted only three is left this part this three is left again i'll check this is the first element i'll check that with eight eight is greater than three yes shift here four is greater than three yes so again four you shift over here after three right hand side shifting and then again after that two is greater than three no one is greater than three no that's it now you can see sort it one two three four and eight you can check it here like this so same logic that i have applied here as well and exactly the same thing you have applied here over here so now let's see i'm going to write the code with the 
insertion sorting algorithm. Let's see how exactly work. And then we will see a couple of test cases over there as well. One method that I have written for the insertion sorting algorithm. And uh, this is the array that I'm passing to this particular method. And then let's see. So I'll do one thing that first of all, that I'm going to write one simple for loop here where integer, let's see, I is equal to, I'm going to start from one actually, because the first element that I have to ignore, right? We have to always start from the second element. It means I'm going to start I is equal to one means from here. We have to start from here. We have to start like this. So I'm saying, okay, up to what I less than AR R dot length over here, dot length. And then after that, I plus plus. Okay. Then I'm going to take one current variable also. Let's see, which is a current variable, which is what that is the first element. That is what we have. Then current is equal to array of I. Then uh, I'll do one thing that I'm going to take another variable. Let's see integer J, which is equal to what, which is equal to I minus one. So J is representing the left hand side element. And then I'm going to write a while loop. I can put a condition that up to where that you have to write the loop. So I'm just going to write that J is greater than or equal to zero. And then I'm going to write that uh, if J is greater than or equal to zero, and then I'm going to write that and, and what, then we have to compare what we have to compare that left hand side element should be greater than right hand side element. It means if eight is greater than four. So what will you write here that I'm going to write this array of what the array of J is greater than the current element here. Right. So array of J is what? So if you see this array of J means J is equal to what? I minus one, I minus one means one minus one is equal to zero. So on zero position, eight is available. So I'm checking eight is greater than four. Current is four. Yes. Because I is equal to one, one is what four over here. So yes, eight is greater than four. It means now the condition is satisfied. Then in that case, what should I do? If eight is greater than four, move eight towards right hand side. It means I'm going to write that array of what? The array of J plus one, which is equal to what array of J here, J by one also here like this. Okay. And once this is done, what should I do in that case after that? Then we have to store because when eight is moving towards four or towards the right hand side, then we have to shift four, right? Because four is available in the current position right now. Then we have to move the current. So where exactly we have to move the current. So I'm writing current should be moved to where it should be moved to the array of J plus one here. So I'm writing area of, or I would say the, the left hand side, it means J minus one over here like this, we can use it. Right. And then once this entire uh, logic is uh, done and then let's call it and let's see, is it really working or not? So I'm just going to call this. And then after this for loop, and uh, I'm just going to print this particular array that arrays dot two string method and supply ARR here, or it should be J plus one here because the current should be what the J plus one position means the J plus one is equal to zero plus one. It means the next position that we have to move, right? Not on the zero position because on the zeroth element element is already available. So now let's run it and let's see. So I'm going to run it and here you can see one, two, three, four, eight. Yes, absolutely working fine. Then let's see, I'm just going to pass only one element. Let's say I'm passing only eight. It should give you eight only. So one single element also, this is fine. Eight is fine. Then I'm giving, okay, eight, nine, zero, and then one, and then 99. Let's see, is it really sorting or not? So yes, zero, one, eight, nine, 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 nine. It's fine. Let's say I'm giving some duplicate numbers, eight, nine, and then zero ones again. And then let's see, it should sort once again. Yes, with zero, zero, one, eight, nine, nine, that is also working fine here. Let's say I'm giving some negative number minus a one and then let's see some larger number also along with that so let's see the doing the insertion sorting here yes so minus one zero zero one eight eight nine nine triple double nine eight nine nine it's absolutely working here so this is a simple logic that also you can write it see writing the code is not a big deal you have to understand that the algorithm how exactly it is working what is the mechanism what is the process to perform the insertion sort here so First, at the time of interview, you explain on the whiteboard, explain on with the pen and paper that, okay, yeah, this is the logic that we have to write the way we have used in the, this one. So you have to just show this, uh, all the combinations here, all the iterations here, and then you perform writing the code there. And then I'm pretty much sure you can easily write the code.
with this particular logic. So that's all for this particular video, guys. I hope you liked it. And then uh, let me know in case of any issues. And we are going to talk about other sorting algorithms also in the upcoming chapters. And then we will exactly same practice with the whiteboard and the coding practice. We will do that. I hope you like this DSA series. Share with others. Let me know in case of any issues. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.